This is Bangladesh, which has emerged as one of Asia's most remarkable and unexpected success stories in recent years. In colonial times, the eastern half of Bengal was one of the poorest parts of British India. However, in the 18th century, before the British Raj, it stood as the richest region in India. Bengal operated as a center for the worldwide muslin, silk and pearl trades. It exported saltpeter to Europe, sold opium in Indonesia, sent raw silk to Japan and the Netherlands, and manufactured cotton and silk textiles for global export. Real wages and living standards in 18th century Bengal were comparable to Britain, which, in turn, had the highest living standards in Europe. After phases of economic exploitation in India, gaining independence and experiencing partition in 1947, East Bengal, or East Pakistan, became one of the poorest countries in the Indian subcontinent. After declaring itself an independent country, Bangladesh, in 1971, became even poorer as the rump of Pakistan fought a savage war to retain it, destroying a significant share of its few assets and killing many of its best and brightest. Following its independence from Pakistan, a new nation, Bangladesh, was born, but expectations couldn't have been lower. The country was promptly dismissed as an international basket case by Ural Alexis Johnson, the US Undersecretary of State for Political Affairs at the time. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger agreed. Few could have predicted how the tables would turn. Over the intervening period, the country's income per person has surpassed both Pakistan's and India's at current prices. But in terms of purchasing power parity, India is still ahead. Before the pandemic, economic growth exceeded 7%, outpacing not just Pakistan and India, but even China. Bangladeshis are not just wealthier, but also healthier and better educated. Some 98% of Bangladeshi children finish primary school, compared with less than a third in the 1980s. Literacy has soared, and infant mortality has plunged. Life expectancy in 2021 was 72 years, a gain of over 16 years since 1990. The country's Human Development Index HDI ranking is now 129th out of a total of 189 countries, still relatively low but better than both Pakistan and India. Bangladesh achieved remarkable economic transformation in just 52 years of independence. The World Bank now classifies it as a lower middle income economy deserving praise and capable of offering important lessons for today's low income countries. But is the praise entirely justified? Is its economy sustainable? Can Bangladesh now serve as a model for other countries, perhaps providing an alternative to the long standing East Asian export led growth paradigm? On August 15, 1947, the great symbol of the British Empire came down for the last time to be replaced by the banner of the new Indian government. The partition of India created two dominions to separate Muslim and non-Muslim populations, India and West and East Pakistan, which included modern-day Bangladesh. For over two decades, the majority Bengali population in East Pakistan was ruled by a central government based in West Pakistan, which spent the majority of capital on its own development. The Bengali grievance was that Bengal was being deprived of its legitimate share in economic resources. Devastating as the War of Independence was, in some ways, it set Bangladesh on the path to success. Many expatriates came home to help their new country recover. Charities like BRAC had a particularly significant impact because they targeted women. By the 1990s, it was running 64,000 schools, not only educating girls, but also employing women to teach in them. There are now more girls in high school than boys, another difference from India and Pakistan. BRAC and other organizations also popularized microcredit, turning millions of rural women into entrepreneurs and maintaining basic social spending. On the jam streets of Dhaka, bicycle rickshaws jostle for position with cars and trucks. In the world's most densely populated country, to survive, you have to find your niche. And in the global economy, Bangladesh has found its niche in exporting ready-made garments. Bangladesh's growth stems, in large part, from its success as an exporter of garments. Today, Bangladesh is one of the world's largest garment exporters with the RMG, ready-made garment, sector accounting for 85% of the country's exports and contributing 9% to GDP. The sector supplies clothing to top brands worldwide. 
and the majority of the 4.4 million workers in this industry are women, 60 to 70 percent. An immensely empowering phenomenon in a country where other job opportunities are scarce. About 80 percent of Bangladesh's foreign exchange is generated by the sector. Additionally, approximately 10 million Bangladeshis working overseas send back $15 billion annually as remittances, constituting another substantial part of the national income. In 2021, Bangladesh's foreign exchange reserves reached an all-time high of $48 billion. The principal driver of growth is investment, which has risen from 24% of GDP in 2000 to 32% in 2022 significantly higher than Pakistan's 13%. Very little is derived from productivity, remaining below 1% per annum since 2000. Bangladesh has lower productivity compared to India, Indonesia, Pakistan, Vietnam and China, the primary determinant of long-term growth of incomes for all countries. Despite dire expectations, military coups in 1975, 1982 and 2007 and a series of natural disasters, Bangladesh has, in fact, made significant progress in reducing poverty and promoting economic growth. It has dramatically improved its prospects, even overtaking India's economic standing, at least on a per capita basis. However, a closer look raises other questions about the quality of this economic record. First, its extreme dependence on a single category of exports, apparel and clothing, and the low share of exports to GDP. While a country like South Korea managed to diversify away from resource-based products, garments and footwear within a matter of 15 to 20 years, starting in 1963, and emerged stronger as an exporter of complex products including steel, machinery, chemicals, transport equipment and consumer electronics, Bangladesh remains focused on a narrow range of relatively low-value garments more than 40 years after the industry took root in 1977 to 1982. While Bangladesh's RMG sector remains a strong exporter to Europe's fashion industry and has significantly grown its market share over the past decade, this trend may not continue. The new preferential trade agreement between the European Union EU, and Vietnam could well lead to apparel exports from Vietnam outperforming Bangladesh's. Among US apparel importers, Vietnam has outpaced Bangladesh's RMG industry for some time. Vietnamese apparel imports into the US were worth 2.5 times those from Bangladesh. As buyers from the US move sourcing out of China, Vietnam is proving to be the biggest winner. Bangladesh's share of exports in GDP has also fallen since 2012, from 20% to 12%, far short of Vietnam's. In addition, the economic complexity, which measures the productive capabilities of large economic systems, of Bangladesh's trade has also slipped from 77 in 1991 to 101 in 2021, whereas India is at 41 and Vietnam at 54. Bangladesh's achievement in ready-made garments is remarkable. However, dependence on a single sector for the majority of export earnings is risky. To sustain economic growth amidst the current global landscape, Bangladesh needs to improve the competitiveness of several other promising sectors to diversify its export basket. It is striving to diversify the trade landscape into light engineering, plastics, leather and footwear. However, to compete on a global scale, companies must improve to meet international standards, but they often fail to do so. Although Bangladesh has attempted to diversify into pharmaceuticals and can meet most of the domestic demand, export earnings were a mere $169 million in 2021, but it is growing at 21%. Needed diversification is slowed by the weakness of private investment in new industries, which has been exasperated by constraints on the availability of credit, especially to small and medium enterprises. The entry and growth of firms are also hampered by the deterioration of the business environment. According to the World Bank's Doing Business Index, Bangladesh ranked 168th out of 190 countries, falling from 65th in 2006. In contrast, competitive countries like India, Indonesia and Vietnam have seen improvements in their rankings over time. Despite steady economic growth in the country over the past decade, Foreign Direct Investment FDI, has been comparatively low in Bangladesh compared to regional peers. The rate of FDI inflow in Bangladesh is less than 1% of GDP, one of the lowest in Asia, 
while FDI in Vietnam is dominating in the region. Government agencies in Bangladesh often claim that they are sincere and very keen on promoting investment by implementing various liberal policies and policy reforms, along with providing incentives. However, government claims do not always reflect the ground reality. The main reasons that discourage foreign investors include its time-consuming bureaucracy, inadequate physical infrastructure, unreliable energy supply, low labor productivity, high cost of doing business, and pervasive corruption. According to Transparency International's ranking, Bangladesh occupies the 147th slot between Madagascar and Nigeria, making a drop of four places from 2010. The experience of Vietnam, which has attracted foreign investment in the electronics industry from Chinese, Japanese and Korean multinational corporations, and of Thailand, which major auto manufacturers have turned into the Detroit of Southeast Asia, is not being replicated, making it even harder for India and Indonesia. Bangladesh's success brings its own set of problems. For one, its exports benefit from the country's participation in various mechanisms that allow tariff-free access to developed economies, such as the US's generalized system of preferences. These groupings are only open to the world's least developed countries. Thanks to its growth, Bangladesh will likely have to give up these privileges by 2026 or so, upon graduation from the least developed country status. Recently, increasing access to financial services is becoming increasingly important, especially in today's digital economy. Bangladesh has been a pioneer in financial inclusion. The introduction of microfinance, mobile financial services, and agent-based banking are notable initiatives. The authorities also promote lending for small and medium-sized enterprises and women entrepreneurs, requiring that banks open at least 50% of their branches in rural areas. These efforts have improved the ratio of bank deposit accounts in the adult population and credit provided to small and medium-sized enterprises run by women. They have also helped boost the number of women entrepreneurs and the number of active mobile money accounts. The forthcoming National Financial Inclusion Strategy will carry forth this momentum. However, to keep this momentum going, Bangladesh will need to boost productive investment by addressing infrastructure bottlenecks and strengthening the banking sector. Bangladesh's success story raises a question. If Bangladesh's social achievements have been greater than its economic ones, does that mean economic growth is pointless? No. But Bangladesh shows that we do not need to wait for extensive growth. However, it might have been done better had its economy grown faster. Growth either made only a modest contribution to the factors that mattered most, or it could have helped them along more. There were no strong trade-offs. Clearly, the major economic challenges facing Bangladesh are results of inadequate and incorrect policies. Added to this are poor policy implementation, inherent structural weaknesses, lack of good governance, and an absence of reform initiatives. A valuable aspect of this 52-year anniversary is that we can observe the megatrends clearly visible in Bangladesh. Sometimes, we are caught up in the issues of the day and forget what has been achieved thanks to the hard work of the Bangladeshi people. It is impressive to see how this country has transformed itself from the devastation of war and natural disasters at the beginning of independence to become a middle-income country today aspiring to even greater prosperity for all of its people.